Hi, it's Tim from Oracle Base. In this video, we'll give a quick demonstration of deploying an Apex application using the SQL CL implementation of Liquibase. This is similar to a previous video, but this time we're using SQL CL rather than the regular Liquibase client. Liquibase uses the SQL file tag in a change set to run an external SQL script. In a default change set, this works fine for simple SQL scripts, but it struggles with more complex files, especially those including SQL plus specific settings and commands. This makes trying to deploy an Oracle Apex application export file difficult unless you plan to do a lot of editing of the file. The SQL CL implementation of Liquibase allows us to use the run Oracle script tag, which offloads the work of running a script to the SQL CL engine. This understands SQL plus specific settings and commands, so we can run Apex export files to load workspaces and applications without having to edit them. If you're new to SQL CL and Liquibase, you might want to check the links in the description box for some beginner notes. There's also a video where we describe most of the scripts and change logs used in this demo, as well as how to manage changes generally. I'm not going to repeat that here, so I'm assuming you already know this. We're going to deploy an Apex application called Demo App. The application is in the Demo App f101.sql file. This is a typical Apex export file for an application. It contains a bunch of SQL plus specific commands, as well as anonymous blocks calling Apex APIs. The rest of the files are simple object creation scripts. The Apex application references some of these objects. Liquibase applies changes using a master change log, which itself can reference other change logs. This could have been one big change log, but we'll split things up. The first change log relates to the tab 1 table and related objects. We have three change sets, each with a single SQL file tag that references one of the SQL scripts. They need to be applied in order because of object dependencies, so we'll include them in the correct order. The tab 1 sequence script, the tab 1 table script, the get tab 1 count function, The changelog for tab 2 follows a similar format, this time only referencing two files, the tab 2 sequence script and the tab 2 table script. The previous changelogs use the regular SQL file tag. The changelog for the Apex application is a little different. We include the namespace for the Oracle Liquibase extensions. Rather than using the SQL file tag, we use the run Oracle script tag. There are variations of this for inline definitions and URLs, but we're using the source type of file. The script name is included as a C data section within the source tag. Using the run Oracle script tag means we can deploy scripts for Apex applications without having to edit them. Now let's look at the master change log. This references the tab 1, tab 2, and Apex application change logs. We check our Apex workspace and we can see there are no applications. Using SQL CL, we connect to the workspace user, then we run the Liquibase update command, passing the master change log as a parameter. I'm using version 19.4 of SQL CL, so I don't need to include the minus change log flag. From version 20.2 onward, the minus change log flag is required. The output from the Liquibase update command shows us the work that's been done. We can see the demo app has been installed in our workspace. So using the run Oracle script tag has made it much easier to create deployment pipelines for Apex applications using SQL CL and Liquibase. Thanks for watching. As always, there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.